So those are announcements. If you have any questions, always contact uh, any of us uh, through the temple, the website, the email, our phone numbers, whatever it takes. So as, um, <clears throat> as was mentioned by that announcement, Monday night uh, will mark the 82nd, 82 years since Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. And I wanna preface my remarks tonight by saying that I would have spoken about Kristallnacht this evening regardless of what we were taught, what was taking place around the world, regardless of the election results and the simmering social tensions in the United States, and for that matter, all of the tensions that exist around the world between social and racial inequality uh, and in the, the pandemic uh, and all that it has conveyed. In fact, as I looked to my files for notes and materials for the sermon, I found an incomplete drosh that I wrote about eight years ago, and I've incorporated much of that into what I have to share tonight. So while I am painfully and uncomfortably aware of the allegory that these thoughts might have to inform the events of the day, I am perhaps most troubled by the obvious fact that all too often the lessons of Kristallnacht are, are relevant to our lives today and every day, even as we promise and proclaim in full voice, never again. The lens of memory that now eclipses the lifespan of nearly all that lived through and might remember that shattering night at the dawn of the final solution, tends to focus on the black and white images of broken shop windows, crudely scrawled graffiti, Jewish homes and businesses on fire, and our brethren molested and beaten in the streets. But far more than windows and glass were broken on Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. The thin facade of humanity was shattered. Not that Germany was kind or accepting of Jews before the dark November night, punctuated by flames, mayhem, and wanton destruction of life and property. Established Germany was by no means a friend or protector of its Jewish citizens even then. But civilian Germany was up to that point somewhat restrained. If for no other reason than good citizens follow laws, adhere to social norms, and up to that moment, the laws still saw Jews as people worthy of some social standing and civil rights. Social norms, though bigoted, still contained some level of civil restraint. There were still some things you didn't do in broad daylight, and even a few that were not to be done even in the dark of night. That was all, of course, until November 9th, 1938. On that night of broken glass, the law was broken. Not the law of Germany, but the laws of humanity. The Talmud declares in a place where no one behaves like a human being, you must strive to be a human being. Such was not the case that evening. Inhumanity ruled the night. With the few notable and important exceptions of the righteous among the nations, those that stood up and said no in word and deed, wherever everyone else was shouting yes or cowering in the corners. Glass is a telling symbol of the events of that evening that led to the Shoah. Glass, when laid with silver, is a mirror, reflecting back all that it sees, but with no memory beyond the moment of reflection. The glass does not remember what it sees. It's only the people who gaze into it that remember. Tonight, and in this moment of democracy, when we must look into the glass mirror, and see the reflection of every human being staring back at us, not our differences, but our similarities. Now, that's not how we normally use a mirror. We usually look into glass to see what is wrong, what doesn't fit right, what's not looking good. Tonight, we must look to see what is right, what is good, what is similar in each of us, to see our humanity, not our differences. And specifically to the United States, who I doubt are even listening to this sermon, 70 million people need to see 70 other million people in that glass. The thin, fragile pain of humanity and civil society was broken 82 years ago. It has been replaced and broken again and replaced and broken again many times since. And it is cracking right now. We know that broken glass cannot, of all things, 
be repaired. Rather, broken glass must be restored, relayed, reglazed, and ultimately replaced. Tonight and every night we remember and must all engage in the process of restoring what was once shattered, person by person, story by story. Tonight we rebuild what others would have destroyed for eternity. Can you hear that song? May it be God's will. Amen.